uh, to conduct treatment of Helanthus uh, or Tree of Heaven, uh, a preferred food source for SLF in areas of western New York where SLF populations are uh, very limited. We are also working with researchers to develop new survey and monitoring tools for SLF and other invasive species. I would also like to reiterate that although we've seen a significant uptick in spotted lanternfly throughout New York City uh, and surrounding areas, spotted lanternfly has not been shown to significantly impact uh, the health of our trees. And as Chris indicated earlier, SLF poses minimal risk to humans, health, and health of our pets and wildlife. To further prevent the spread of uh, and encourage the public we all encourage the public to conduct uh, um, outdoor uh, inspections of outdoor equipment, uh, things like your vehicles, camping gear, uh, other equipment, lawnmowers, etc., uh, and check for egg masses or the spotted lanternfly itself, uh, especially before traveling outside the area. Uh, with that, I'd like to pass it over to Brian Eschner. Senior Extension Associate with the New York State Integrated Pest Management, who will share with you some helpful resources in dealing with spotted lantern fly. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. So I'm here today representing uh, Cornell University's College of Agriculture and the Cornell Extension System. And all of those units have been engaged with spotted lantern fly and looking for it as we were anticipating it arriving here state. Uh, there is currently a lot of research that's happening. Several research projects are happening right at Cornell University, including some looking at beneficial uh, organisms that will naturally control uh, spotted lanternfly. But I'd like to take a moment today to talk about the biology and what we're seeing with spotted lanternfly out there so New Yorkers know what to expect. So spotted lanternfly right now we're seeing mostly the adults, most of the uh, Nymphs have uh, emerged and have become adults. With adults, they can fly around, and they don't like to stay in just one plant. They have uh, a broad palate, and they can feed on over 100 different plant species. And as they move around through the landscape, they will often land on their favorite host plant, and that is Alanthus, or the Tree of Heaven, very common in New York City and in upstate New York as well. That's an invasive plant that they really like, and if they have access to that, they can lay seven times the amount of eggs, and they can start laying eggs earlier. Speaking of egg laying, egg laying begins at the end of September, right around um, September 20th is when we've uh, seen it in the last couple of years here. And so uh, the egg masses will be laid by the females, and those will be patches. If you can see uh, an image of that right here, uh, there are individual eggs that get covered with this putty-like material. And as we heard before, it's really important to inspect anything that's being moved that may have this egg mass on it. We used to say that it could be laid on any hard surface. Now we know it can be laid on a hat that's left outside or a seat cushion on a patio chair. So if that's being moved to a new area, um, upstate New York, in our grape and wine growing regions, it could bring uh, spotted lanternfly to those areas. And it's moving slowly, and the uh, slower that spread is, the more time we have for that research that's taking place at Cornell and really up and down the East Coast. There's a lot of university research that's happening, and we're learning more and more about this insect that was relatively new to us before it arrived here. Uh, it was new to science, so we're playing catch-up and finding a lot out about that. So uh, the eggs will be laid uh, through the fall, starting at that September time. Uh, and then when we have the first hard freeze, sometimes that's not until November in the city, the uh, adults will die. So the adults die. Generally by uh, December, you're going to see the last uh, spotted lanternfly adult. And then... Um, the eggs survive through the winter. The eggs can handle our cold temperatures without any problem. They can survive sub-zero temperatures. So they'll be around. And then in May, sometime generally around mid-May, depending on how warm the spring is, they'll hatch again. 
and that's when we see those small black and white insects that uh, are the nymphal stages. They are feeding and uh, molting, similar to way, the way a snake would, expanding each time. Finally, they reach that stage that we just saw in July where they're red in color, and it's from there that a slit develops on the backside of that nymph and the adult uh, emerges. So that pretty much takes a look at the life cycle. They are uh, sap feeders, so they feed on the pipework of the tree or the small plant that they're on. They tap in to that xylem and phloem, feed on the sap, and then when they're doing that, they're a filter feeder, they're exuding honeydew, and that can um, fall on anything that's below. When there's a lot of spotted lanternfly there, it might feel even like uh, a little bit of a drizzle if you're under there. Where it coats the surface, we can get a mold that grows on top of that called a sooty mold. It's a black colored uh, mold that develops there. These uh, can coat plant material, but um, they're relatively harmless, uh, but they can be a nuisance again. Uh, we do have uh, some control measures. We'll take a look after we're done here at a couple traps that we have set up over there. That's one safe way that homeowners can manage spotted lanternfly. Um, they can also use, as our ag and markets and other municipalities are doing, uh, getting vacuums. And I've seen people with shop vacs or portable uh, backpack vacuums or even a little handheld vacuum to remove the nuisance insects. Um, there are some insecticides that are labeled, but uh, in most cases, homeowners are not gonna need to do that. As was mentioned earlier, they don't harm our shade trees or our shrubbery in our landscape. One exception is grapes, and our vineyard managers are aware and they're ready to treat as needed in those grape growing regions. Uh, the other exception is this weedy uh, plant species called Tree of Heaven or Atlantis. And I have a representative leaf from it. It has these uh, leaflets on it. So this is a very large uh, example of a leaf with all of these leaflets on it, pinnate leaf compound. One thing that distinguishes this from shumac and maybe black walnuts are the lobes that are at the base. And the other uh, aspect that is really characteristic is the scent of this. Uh, it has a very strong scent, so if you're wondering if it's an Atlantis, you can smell it. It's a strong uh, peanut butter uh, scent. And uh, they do, as I mentioned earlier, really do well when they have this at some point in their life. Cycle. We have uh, references on the treatment options for homeowners on our New York State Integrated Pest Management website. So I would uh, encourage people to check that out. And yeah, I think, uh, can we take some questions now? Maybe bring everybody yep, I think up. this is kind of like the formal portion. We are going to go over to those two trees that have traps. And um, Brian's going to be able to kind of walk everybody through what these are, how they help, how homeowners can attach them themselves. Before we do that, just wanted to open up to any questions, or if we're all ready to move over, we can move over quick. Yeah, great. Okay. I just set it up this morning. Oh, great. And then we can do it. Yeah. If we could do this. But yeah. So the idea, uh, maybe I should wait till everybody gets yeah. over here. But yeah. And project. Uh, and, and talk louder. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Ready to go. Here. So. 
here we have uh, a circle trap, and this takes advantage of the behavior of spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly always like to cl uh, crawl up. When they do that, they this trap encircles the tree, and they're funneled in to this bag that's at the top. And I just put this on this morning. We already have two in here, and um, this in areas where there's a great infestation, maybe every few days the bag might be full, would be removed and a new one uh, put up. But this is, um, you know, a safe way to uh, trap the spotted lanternfly. Any questions about yeah, that? How, how do folks learn how to make one of these traps? Yeah, that's a really good point. So there's information about this on um, the New York State Integrated Pest Management website. There's also an excellent video uh, created by Penn State that's out there so you can create your own. You can purchase these too. Um, and um, this one was actually uh, one that was uh, purchased. There's a company that's making these. Yeah. I knew where you were going. I was just trying to use the branch. I know. Hi, yeah. if you could. Thank you so very much, sir. And you can see how they're jumping around there. That does make them difficult if you're out there. Um, it, it can be tricky to try to ke catch them, but they will jump upwards, so if you're in front of them, that can help. How long do they survive in there? Um, they can only survive without eating for about 48 hours at standard temperatures outdoors and summer temperatures and room temperatures so they can't survive indoors as well. That should have brought that up so we're not going to see them be a nuisance pest inside. They have to continually feed so indoors about two days and they die. They typically stay low on trees or high on trees? They go the whole way up into the canopy. We notice them down lower but um, they're feeding here up in the canopy. They lay, 80% of their eggs are laid above 10 feet in height. So uh, we used to wonder about scraping the egg masses and that can be helpful, but it's not gonna reach uh, the majority of them. So there's another trap here. People like to use a sticky trap, but there's a precaution with that that I Oh, it works. They can. Yeah. They can. And there are instructions online right. to do also that. Yep. Yes, yep. it is the, the Penn I State site. Okay. Yeah, so this is a sticky trap. And this is a really simple way to uh, trap the spotted lanternfly. Again, they're going to be uh, climbing up. Even though they can fly, they tend to climb up the trunk, often feeding along the way, um, extracting sap from the trunk. And so the, the part that is working here is the sticky material, uh, sticky tape that's put around here. But we include the screen so that we're not capturing birds or chipmunks or other animals. Because if a woodpecker, for example, sees that insect there, they like to eat insects and they might go after that. And sadly, there are pictures, you can see them online, where uh, birds have been caught in that sticky material. So this prevents that, having some screen around there. And you can see that's just put up with a, a thumbtack. And that is screen that you can buy at a, a, just a hardware or home store. And the bird won't go up No, there. no, the birds are coming down from above. And so we've not seen any birds uh, get in there when you have the screen up. Is it a lot worse at this time of year when they're about to start laying the eggs? Like, is that like... So, uh, yeah, I would say their peak activity is over the next couple of weeks. And then uh, later in the fall, however, we sometimes see them congregate together on trees. And that can be alarming when you can see hundreds on an individual tree. Um, and then they, they disperse from there. Uh, this is kind of what they do, you know, during their egg laying time. But, um, you know, that would be a perfect time when they're all together to use a vacuum. Um, also, you can even hose them off. Some of them will be injured from the stream of water, uh, and it'll take a while for the others to, to come back. But um, 
that can remove a nuisance from it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And there's more. There's some of the, the tree and there's some naturally that you can see around here in the park. It's not a high population here, but they do. Do they flock to one particular area more than the others? Yeah, there are certain trees. So uh, we saw some on the sycamore today and there's a tree just down here called uh, the Atlantis, the tree of heaven that we were looking at that held the leaf, held the leaf up. I got it from a tree down there and uh, they were there all morning on that. So I right. wanted to take a little walk down yeah. there. We yeah. could do that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I heard you guys are doing the other thing. I'm oh, just you trying did. to break that something. Okay. Just want to make sure we didn't leave you out. I appreciate it. Thank you.